Magandang magandang hapon mga minamahal kong kapatid sa Panginoon. Ako ay nagpupurit, nagpapasalamat sa Diyos sa isa na namang pagkakataon na kanyang ibinigay upang ako ay makapagbahagi sa inyo ng isang mensahe sa hapong ito. And I praise the Lord for the life of our mentor, Pastor Wilbert and Pastor Hasmin for the opportunity para makapag-share ng mensahe ng ating Panginoon. We are all born to win. But to be a winner, we must plan to win, prepare to win, and expect to win. Ating natutunan. From Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, nang nilikha ng Diyos ang tao ayon sa kanyang wangis at larawan, merong sinabi ang Panginoon doon, tayo yung mamamahala sa lahat ng hayop at sa lahat ng nilalang na gumagapang sa lupa. Therefore, you and I receive the call of leadership. We are all born to win. Actually, we are born winners. Subalit para mapanatili natin the perfect design of God that we will win every battle in this life, we must plan to win, we must prepare to win, and we must expect to win. This afternoon, ako po yung magsishare sa inyo ng mensahe na pinamagatan kong Self-leadership, the key to winning. Father, we thank you for this wonderful afternoon. Sa pagkakataon po na muli kaming magkasama-sama upang pagbulay-bulayan ng iyong pong salita. At ang aming pong panalangin through this message, Lord God, makita namin, Panginoon, kung ano ang susi talaga sa pagtatagumpay. Lord, salamat because you created us winners. You created us, Father God, victorious. Pero Lord, kailangan naming matutunan magplano para manalo. Mag-expect that we will win. That we will be victorious in this life that you have given us. Oh God, the Holy Spirit, speak to us in a very powerful way this afternoon. Ang mensahe mo, O Diyos, ang madala ko po sa mga kapatid na nanonood ngayon na takikinig. Not the things that I thought is right. Not the things that I thought is what they need. But Lord, what is really you want them to tell the people? Salamat po, Panginoon. Ako'y nananampalatay at naniniwala. You are with us this afternoon. And you will be with us mula sa pasimula hanggang sa matapos ang amin pong pagbubulay-bulay ng iyong pong salita. Salamat, Balal na Spirito. Mangusap ka po sa napakamakapangyarihang paraan sa amin pong kalagitnaan. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen and Amen. Self-leadership, the key to winning. Sabi po ni Andrew Bryant, self-leadership is the practice of intentionally influencing your thinking, feeling, and action towards your objective. Marami pong tao, gusto natin magtagumpay sa buhay. Gusto natin manalo sa buhay. Especially we as believers of our Lord Jesus Christ. We want to win and of course, we are expected to win the battle ng buhay anuman ang ating maging karanasan. Sabi ni Andrew Bryant, pag sinabi self-leadership, ito daw yung intentional na i-influensya natin yung ating sarili, yung ating nararamdaman at yung ating mga gagawin para makamit natin ang isang bagay na nais nating makamit. Si Peter Drucker naman noong 2010 ay nagsabi, That self-leadership is serving as chief, captain, or CEO of one's own life. Sabi ko nga po, maraming gustong manalo, pero ang problema, we cannot lead ourselves to winning. Therefore, self-leadership is very essential sa buhay po natin mga Kristiyano para mapagtagumpayan natin ang laban na maaari nating maranasan sa buhay na ito. Self-leadership is serving as chief, captain, or CEO of one's own life. Dapat ganito po natin nalilid ang ating sarili para makamit natin yung mga nais ng Panginoon ating pong makamit. In fact, sa ating pong pagsunod sa Diyos, isa ito sa kulang na kulang sa maraming mga Kristiyano. We cannot lead ourselves. Hindi natin mailid ang ating sarili, hindi natin ma-influence ang ating sariling kaisipan, ang ating sariling damdamin, maging ang ating mga ginagawa ng mga bagay na ating natututunan. Brian Tracy 
Father added that setting a goal and taking full responsibility for that goal is self-leadership. Magsiset tayo ng goal, tayo ang responsible para maabot or para mangyari yung plano na yun. Yes, of course, God is the ultimate. Siya ang ultimate na planner sa ating buhay. Pero kailangan pa rin yung ating cooperation sa kung ano yung plano ng ating Diyos. At dito papasok ang kalaga ng self-leadership. In the Bible, there was a man whom I know, and I know, alam nyo rin, na grabe yung kanyang ipinakitang self-leadership. And that man is none other than Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 4, sabi po ng Biblia ay ganito. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah, in the month of Kislev, in the twentieth year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days, I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Si Nehemiah po, he was a cup bearer to the king. Pero yung passion niya, para, yung pagmamahal niya para sa kanyang mga kababayan, ay hindi po nawawala. Kaya dumating ang pagkakataon na dumating si Hanani at ang iba pa pong mga kababayan niya from Judah, tinanong niya ano bang nangyari sa mga Hudyo na natira, those had, who had survived the exile and also about Jerusalem. At ang naging report ng kanyang mga kalahi sa pangunguna ni Hanani is that hindi maganda sapagkat ang kanyang mga kababayan na nakabalik mula sa pagkakabihag ay nakakaranas ng kaawa-awang sitwasyon. Maging ang pader ng Jerusalem at ang pintuan ng mga lungsod ay hindi pa nagawa mula ng sunugin ito. Dito makikita natin, in verse 4, When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days, I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Dito makikita po natin ang unang katangian ng isang self-leader. He is passionate. He is unstoppable. Si Nehemiah, magaman may trabaho siya as the cupbearer to the king. When he heard the news about sa napakalungkot na kalagayan ng mga Hudyo at ng Jerusalem, sabi po sa, tag, sa The Living Bible Translation, When I heard this, I sat down and cried. In fact, I refused to eat for several days for I spent the time in prayer to the God of heaven. Nung nalaman niya yung problema ang kinakaharap ng kanyang mga kababayan, si Nehemiah po ay umiyak sa Diyos. Nanalangin. Nag-ayuno. At hindi siya kumain ng ilang araw dahil ang lahat ng kanyang panahon ay kanyang ginugol sa pananalangin sa ating Panginoon. This must be a character of a soap leader. Dapat passionate tayo sa ating ginagawa. Anong ibig sabihin po ng passionate? Hindi tayo nawawala ng pag-asa. Buong tapang tayo na humaharap sa anumang mga sitwasyon sa ating buhay. And it really takes a passionate heart for us to win the battle in life. Soap leaders, mga passionate people, those leaders are built from within. Passionate sila sa kanilang ginagawa. Passionate to learn. Passionate to grow. Passionate to fulfill their duty. Hard worker, smart worker. And they never give up. Ito ang hinahanap ng Diyos sa bawat isa po sa atin that we will never give up ano man ang sitwasyon na ating maranasan. Laging nag-aapo yung ating puso para magawa yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon. Laging nag-aapo yung ating kalooban to fulfill the mandate of God. To be a proper leader, we need to think about our actions. It is important to realize and understand when it is appropriate to act 
and when it is not. One must be prepared to act and it must be done with the best intent. Tayo daw po para tayo maging tamang leader, winning leader. Kailangan natin pag-isipan ang ating mga ginagawa. Kailangan ma-realize natin at maunawaan kailan dapat kumilos at kailan dapat hindi. Dapat ang bawat isa sa atin ay handang gumawa and it must be done with the best intent. We must be unstoppable. Pag alam na natin kung anong pinapagawa sa atin ng Diyos, alam na natin kung anong mandato sa atin ng ating Panginoon, we must be full of passion for God, passion for spiritual things, passion for the mandate that the Lord has given us. And this will ensure our victory. This will ensure our winning. Ang isa pong self-leader, ang isang tao na kayang ilid ang kanyang sarili, he must be full of passion. He must learn to love ideas and the actions na kanyang ginagawa. Ito po, napakahalaga po nito eh. Sa ating pagiging leader, yung nalala ko lang po ang ating spiritual mentor, Pastor Robert Butiel, grabe yung kanyang passion. Naabuti ng mga pastor, abuti ng mga leaders, workers sa church, at ang mga pastor, at sila'y pagkaisahin para mangyari ang plano ng Diyos para po sa kanyang iglesia. Without the passion that our spiritual mentor had, has, mga kapatid, wala po tayo ngayon. I've seen him sa kanya pong edad. He's been traveling all around the Philippines. Parang walang kapaguran, pero sabi po niya, minsan siya ay napapagod din. But because of that passion in his heart, he is unstoppable. Ano mang bagyo ay susuungin, ano mang pagsubok ay kakayanin, pagtagumpayan, because he loved the ideas that the Lord has given him. He loved the, the things that he is doing for God. And meron din siyang self-belief. Naniniwala si pastor, siya ay tinawag ng Diyos at may mandato ang Lord para sa kanya. Walang anumang bagay na pwedeng humadlang sa kanya. That is self-leadership. At ako'y naniniwala mga kapatid, bawat isa sa atin, gusto ng Diyos, we must be like Pastor Wilbert. Gusto ng Lord, we are to influence ourselves, our thinking, our feeling, for us to be victorious, enriching the goals na sinet po ng Diyos para po sa atin. God wants us to influence ourselves. Hindi lang tayo dapat umaasa sa leadership ng iba. Dapat tayo ay self-driven. Dapat tayo may sariling kusa. May self-initiative. May self-leadership. And we must be passionate in everything that we will be doing. Pangalawa pong katangian ng isang self-leader, he is a visionary. Ibig sabihin, he set goals and he committed. He is committed to pursue it. In Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 4 to 5, Nung si Nehemiah po'y pumunta sa hari, sabi po ng Bible, the king said to me, what is it you want? Kasi nakita po ng hari na si Nehemiah ay malungkot. At alam natin, sa kanilang kultura, sa kultura po ng kaharian, hindi ka pwede mag-appear sa hari na ikaw ay nalulungkot. Pero dito hindi talaga matiis ni Nehemiah because of his passion, his love for the Israelites people, his love for the city of Jerusalem. Hindi niya natiis when he presented himself to the king na babanaag ang kalungkutan sa kanyang pong mukha, sa kanyang mata. That is why the king asked him, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven and, and I answered the king, if it pleases the king and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. Oh, mga minamahal kong kapatid, kuhanin natin dito yung katangian ni Nehemiah. When he heard from Hanani na siya ay na wasak, sunog pa rin ang uh, pader na Jerusalem at ang pintuan ng mga lungsod. He know exactly what to do. He is a visionary. Agad ang alam niya, kailangan niyang gumawa ng hakbang to rebuild the wall where his ancestors are buried. Mahalagang mahalaga po ito sa atin bilang mga servant ng ating Panginoon. Kailangan we envision the future. Kailangan we should be enthusiastic and we lead ourselves. 
Kailangan makita po natin agad-agad ano yung pinapagawa ng Diyos sa atin. Napakagandang katangian po dito na nakita natin sa buhay ni Nehemiah. He just heard the news mula sa kanyang mga kababayan and immediately he has a vision of what to do. To the wall of Jerusalem. Alam na niya agad. He set goals and he is committed to pursue it. Even to the point na iiwanan niya ang kaharian. Pansamantala. Para lamang magawa yung alam niyang ipinagagawa sa kanya ng Diyos. Pasinin po natin sa kwento ng buhay ni Nehemiah. No one has told them. No one has told them kung ano kanyang gagawin. Walang nagsabi sa kanya na Tebel Hanani. Hindi nakiusap si Hanani kay Nehemiah, gawin mo ito, tulungan mo kami. But Nehemiah is a visionary. He knows, he knew what to do, given a certain situation. Mga kapatid, bilang mana ng palataya ng atin pong Panginoon Heso Kristo, kailangan-kailangan magkaroon po tayo ng ganitong katangian. We must envision the future. Dapat nakikita natin ang patutunguhan ng ating buhay. Dapat nakikita natin ang patutunguhan ng ating paglilingkuran sa Panginoon. Huwag po tayo sumunod lamang, maglingkod lamang, dahil nakikiuso tayo sa iba. You and I must have a vision of our own of what God wants us to do. Dapat po, we have a God-given vision. So that ang ating mga ginagawa, hindi ala tsamba. Hindi tayo nakikipagsapalaran. Ginagawa natin o gagawin natin kung ano yung pinapagawa ng Panginoon because we have seen it clearly in our mind. Napakahalaga po nun. Yung makita na natin sa ating isip ngayon pa lamang kung ano ang pinapagawa ng Diyos, kung ano ang ipinapa-accomplish ng Panginoon sa atin pong mga buhay, that is self-leadership. Mga minamahal kong kapatid sa maraming pagkakataon, we will experience discouragement. Sa maraming pagkakataon, kung gaano karami ang napakagandang plano ng Diyos sa atin sa bawat araw, ganun din karami ang plano ng kaaway para sirain ang magandang plano ng Diyos. And therefore, discouragement can come. Frustrations, persecutions, lahat na ng klase ng problema pwede natin maranasan sa buhay. Subalit so, kung tayo nakatingin doon sa vision na pinakita ng Lord sa atin, kay Nehemiah, napakaliwanag sa kanya, he was the one commissioned by God to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Maging ang pagharap sa hari, hindi niya kinatakutan. Kapag nakikita po natin ang ating bukas, Hallelujah! We will be filled with enthusiasm. Mapupuno po tayo ng enthusiasm. Malilid natin yung ating sarili kahit anuman, gaano man kahirap ang sitwasyon, kahit gaano man kalaki yung problema nating maranasan sa pag-accomplish natin ng mandato ng Diyos, we will never give up. Because in our mind, in our heart, in our spirit, alam natin kung ano ang pinagagawa sa atin ng ating Panginoon. O oh, mga minamahal kong kapatid sa Panginoon, we must be visionaries for us to finish this journey that the Lord set before us. Kailangan. We must have a vision of our future. We must have a vision of the plans of God for our lives. Kung ano yung pinakita sa atin ng Lord, huwag nating bibitawan. Ako po'y naniniwala bawat isa sa atin, lalo na sa mga kapwa ko, pastor, mga manggagawa, mga matagal na naglilingkod sa Panginoon. Alam ko, may pinakita ang Lord sa atin. Maaaring hindi mo nakita literally to a vision, but there is a word, a direction, a prophetic declaration. For example, this 2023, ang prophetic declaration po ng ating spiritual mentor, this is a year of kingdom manifestation. We should envision. Kailangan yung declaration na yun ay matrans, matranslate natin into vision. Ano ang gusto ng Lord na mangyari sa ating buhay? Ano ang, Lord, ang gusto ng Lord na magawa natin or maranasan natin sa taong ito sa ating paglilingkuran sa Kanya? And we were, when we will be able to envision our future, to envision this 2023, hallelujah, po position tayo ng tama for us to partake in this year of kingdom manifestation. Oh, hallelujah! The Lord is so gracious to us mga kapatid sa hapon na ito, dahil pinapakita at pinapaunawa sa atin ng ating Panginoon, if we want to fulfill 
our God-given mandate. If we want to be victorious, if we want to keep on winning, ano man ang ating maranasan sa buhay, mahalaga first, we must be passionate in everything that we are doing, and second, we must be visionaries. Pangatlong bagay po na nakita ko sa buhay ni Nehemiah, he knows how to prioritize. And he is willing to let go of non-essentials. In chapter 1 verse 11 hanggang chapter 2 verse 6, Sabi po ng Bible ay ganito, Lord, sabi ni Nehemiah, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this, your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revealing your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was kept buried to the king. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaherhes, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, Why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart. I was very much afraid. But I said to the king, My king live forever. Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, What is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven, and I answered the king, If it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah, where my ancestors are buried, so that I can rebuild it. Then the king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked me, How long will your journey take, and when will you get back? It pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. Pakita natin mga kapatid sa buhay po ni Nehemiah, he was a cupbearer to the king. Of course, priority dapat ang trabaho. But because of his passion, because of his being a visionary, hindi po si Nehemiah nagpapigil. Mahalaga ang kanyang trabaho, pero mahalaga ang ipinagagawa ng Diyos sa kanya. Mga kapatid, Katulad ni Nehemiah, we should have this kind of characteristic as servants of God. We should know what our priorities are. We should know how, how to prioritize essential things and to let go of non-essentials. Ulitin ko, mahalaga ang trabaho ni Nehemiah, pero mas mahalaga ang pinagagawa ng Diyos. Minsan sa buhay po natin, dito tayo sumasablay. Alam natin, mahalaga ang ipinagagawa ng Panginoon sa atin, pero mas madalas nakatingin tayo doon sa ano yung ginagawa natin at the present. Lalo na. na nakakalungkot po ito ng mga kapatid. Maraming mga kakilala tayo. I believe hindi lang ako maging kayo. Nung wala pang trabaho, very active sa church, very prayerful, pero nung nakakuha na ng trabaho, Hindi na consider may trabaho pala ng Sunday. Hindi na consider meron palang malayo pala sa church sa kanyang kinabibilangan. Isang araw, nawala na lang sa church because meron ng ibang pinagkaabalhan. Nehemiah is never like that. Itong pagharap po niya kay Sahari, kay King Artaherhes, ng malungkot, Alam niyo po mga kapatid, it can cost his life. Pwede niya itong ikamatay. Pero makita natin dito, hindi niya inalintana yung pwedeng mangyari sa kanyang buhay just for the sake of fulfilling the mandate of God for his life. He knows how to prioritize things. He is willing to let go of the non-essentials. Kamusta naman tayo, mga minamahal kong kapatid? Si Lord ba priority natin sa buhay at ang kanyang mandato? Or kung ano pa rin yung gusto natin? Kung ano pa rin yung mga hindi naman mahalaga sa Diyos, yung pa rin yung ating pinagkakaabalhan at pinahahalagahan? Mahalaga po ito, mga kapatid. Sabi ni Pastor Robert, if you are not in the right place fulfilling your calling, no matter how hard you are working today, 
If you are not in the right place fulfilling God's calling, you will never have your breakthrough. Kailangan na sa tamang lugar tayo na ginagawa ang kalawaban ng Diyos kung gusto po nating manalot magtagumpay sa buhay na ito. Hindi pwedeng pachamba-chamba. Hindi pwedeng okay na to. God wants us to give Him our best. Want, God wants us to prioritize His will and His plans for our lives. This year, 2023, mga minamahal kong kapatid, let us streamline our priorities. Let us streamline our activities. Huwag tayong sugod sa kaliwa, sugod sa kanan, gawa ito, gawa dito. Baka po nasasayang lang ang ating oras, pero hindi naman talaga yan ang pinapagawa sa atin ng ating Panginoon. We must influence our thinking. We must influence our feelings. So that hindi tayo napapadala sa bugso ng ating damdamin, sa influence ng mundo, sa influence ng mundo. Let us lead ourselves. Sabi ni Peter Drucker, di ba? Self-leaders are those who are the chief, the CEO of his own life. Yes, God is the CEO. Alam natin yan. Pero of course, nasa atin pa rin naman ang pagpapasya. Kung tayo makikoperate sa sinasabi ng Lord at sa kanyang mandato para sa ating mga buhay. Nehemiah knows how to prioritize things. Pangapat po nakatangian ng self-leader is self-leader is strategic. Tingnan natin si Nehemiah. Napakahusay po niya. Sabi ng verse 7, I also said to him, If it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of trans-Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct until I, I arrive in Judah? And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple, and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy. And because the gracious hand of God was on me, the king granted my request. Napakahusay po, di ba? Napaka-strategic ni Nehemiah. Kailangan niya ng pass para siya po ay makapag makatravel ng ligtas. Kailangan niya ng mga kahoy na gagamitin sa pagpapagawa ng pag-rebuild ng wall. Napakatalino. Humingi siya ng sulat sa hari para ibigay sa letters ng letters sa governor ng trans-Euphrates para ibigay kay Asap at dahil ang Diyos ay mabuti sa kanya. Sabi ng Bible, the king granted his request. Mga kapatid, we have to be strategic. We have to strategize. Kitang-kita po natin ito sa buhay ng ating mga mentors. Kitang-kita natin ito sa buhay ng mga successful man of God in the Bible, and even yung mga nabubuhay sa ngayon. They are very strategic, and it is part of being a self-leader. Karakter ito na isang tao na may self-leadership. Tinan niyo po, sa verse 9, sabi dito, So I went to the governors of trans Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. Napakahusay ng pagpaplano ni Nehemiah. Kaya naman, nakuha niya ang favor ng king, ng governor. Ng king, ng governor. And in verse 11, I went to Jerusalem and after staying there three days, I set out during the night with a few others. I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. Makita pa rin po natin dito na yung pagiging strategic ni Nehemiah Pumunta po siya sa Jerusalem, nagmanman po siya, he set out during the night. May ilan lang siyang kasama, pero wala siyang pinagsabihan kung ano ang nilagay ng Lord sa puso niya, kung ano ang gagawin sa Jerusalem. Mga kapatid, isa po ito sa mga nagiging kamalian ng marami sa atin. Isang bagay na natutunan ko po sa ating mga mentors, in your victory, be quiet. Even sa mabibigat na sitwasyon, be quiet. Katulad po ni Nehemiah, hindi niya pinaalam sa maraming tao ang kanyang plano. Alam na natin, maraming tao ang kukontra. Even sa atin, hindi naman po lahat ng tao masaya sa ating mga tagumpay. And there are people, when we are in misery, akala mo dadamayan ka, kaya ka nagkukwento. But the truth is, pagtatawanan ka pa nila at lilibakin, after na malaman nila kung ano yung presenting kalagayan mo. Mga kapatid, 
We must be strategic in everything that we do. Let the fruit of our success ang makita nila. We don't need nasabihin pa sa iba kung ano nangyayari sa buhay natin except for those whom we trust at alam natin magiging masaya sa ating tagumpay at makikiyak sa atin sa panahon ng ating kapigatian. Nehemiah was so strategic. Bago siya umalis, humingi ng sulat sa hari. Nung makarating niya sa Jerusalem, nagmanman siya without telling anyone what the Lord had put in his heart to do for Jerusalem. At sabi po sa verse 13, By night I went out through the valley gate toward the jackal well and the dung gate examining the walls of Jerusalem which had been broken down and its gates excuse me, which had been destroyed by fire. Then I moved on toward the fountain gate and the king's pool but there was not enough room for my mount to get through. So I went up the valley by night examining the wall. Finally, I turned back and re-entered into the valley gate. The officials did not know where I had gone and what I was doing. Because as yet I had said nothing to the Jews or the priests or the nobles or officials or any others who would be doing the work. Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in? Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. Come. Let us rebuild the wall, the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of God on me and what the king had said to me. They replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. Isa pa po nagpapakita ng pagiging strategic ni Nehemiah, he kept to himself the plans. Nung ayos na lahat ng bagay, na-observe na niya, alam na niya na buo na sa kanyang isipan ng plano, as I have told you before, kanina, di ba? Visionary po siya. Nung nabuo na ang plano sa kanyang isip, everything is set ang kanya pong ginawa. Sa kanya, sinabi sa mga kapwa niya, Hudyo, kung ano ang ipinapagawa ng Diyos at kung ano ang naranasan niyang pabor ng hari. Minsan tayo po ganito eh. Hindi pa nagsisimula yung plano. Ako po, problema ko yan. Minsan because I felt just so, alam niyo po yan, masyado tayong pamilyar na sa mga tao na i-open natin lahat ng bagay sa buhay natin. Minsan, hindi naman nila nagugustuhan yung plano natin. Lalo na kung hindi pa naman final. Lalo na kung hindi pa naman nasa ayos talaga yung plano. Ang tendency, dahil na-brought out natin sa kanila, hindi pa tama yung plano, hindi pa hinog. It causes them para ayawan yung ating plano. Pero si Nehemiah, sinigurado niya muna, nakaplano ang lahat, ilalatag niya ng maayos ang lahat, walang sino mang magtatanong na hindi niya masasagot, walang sino mang kukwestiyon sa paraan niya na hindi niya masasagot. This is how to be strategic. Salamat po sa Panginoon. With the mentorship ng ating po mga spiritual mentors, I am learning my lesson well sa aspetong ito ng pagiging strategic. Lagi ko po itong naririnig sa ating mga mentors. Huwag mong ibukas lahat. May mga plano na ikaw lang ang kailangan makaalam. May pagkakataon naman, may ilang involved. Sa maliit na grupo na lang. Kasi if we become very open sa lahat, some others, hindi naman naniniwala sa gusto mo. Some others, wala namang tiwala sa atin. Some others, gusto lang talagang manggulo. Much better like what Nehemiah did. Tahimik lang tayo. At pag may resulta na, okay na ang lahat, saka natin ilatag ang plano. Katulad ng sinabi nila, let us start rebuilding and so they began. This could work. Strategic people, self-leaders, they take full responsibility for their actions. Isa po itong napakagandang katangian na dapat taglayin ng bawat isa sa atin. Si Nehemiah, nakita niya, may nilagay ang Diyos sa puso niya, siya ang magre-rebuild ng wall ng Jerusalem. Wala siyang sinayang na pagkakataon. Pinag-aralan niya yung trabaho ang binigay sa kanya ng Diyos. He take full responsibility. Self-leader develops and takes responsibility for his actions. A self-leader, 
has the ability or has learned to have the ability to influence their thinking, behaviors, and feelings. This person guides themselves in positive ways, which equals success. Nakita po natin kay Nehemiah, hindi siya napapigil sa nakita niyang kawawang kalagayan ng Jerusalem at ng mga Hudyo. Hindi niya tinignan na mahirap. Alam niyo po, mamay pagpapatuloy natin yung ating pag-aaral. There were oppositions. May naranasan silang oppositions. But Nehemiah, yung kanyang isip, yung kanyang damdamin, yung kanyang ugali, kontrolado niya. He possess self-leadership. Kayo strategy na kanyang ginagawa, pinag-aaralan niyang mabuti. Hindi siya basta sugod ng sugod, gawa nito, gawa nito ng hindi pinag-iisipan. Mahalaga po ito sa atin mga pastor, sa atin mga church leaders. Isang bagay na natutunan ko sa ating mga mentors. Pinag-aaralan dapat ang bawat takbang. Inuunawa dapat ang mga bagay-bagay. Sabi ni Pastor Robert, we should be wise as serpent and meek as dove. Kailangan matalino po tayo sa ating pagpapasya. Kailangan matalino tayo sa lahat ng bagay na ating gagawin. Because if not, mapipreempt kung ano yung pinaplano ng Lord para sa ating mga buhay. Ako yung maasa mga kapatid na sa hapong ito, ang Lord ay nakakapangusap sa ating mga buhay. We need to be passionate. We must be visionaries. We must know how to prioritize. And we must be strategic if we want to win in this battle of life. And lastly, self-leaders are consistent and persistent. Mahalaga po yung tayo'y tuloy-tuloy at hindi tayo pabago-bago ng isip. When Sanballat the Horon Horonite and Tobiah the Amorite official heard about this, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. But when Sanballat the Horonite, Tob Tobiah the Ammonite official and Geshem the Arab heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed us. What is this you are doing? They asked. Are you rebelling against the king? I answered them by saying, The God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding, but as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim or historic right to it. Eto na po. Kaya nga, strategic si Nehemiah, parang wala agad ko kontra, pero eto na. Nung narinig na ni San Balat and Tituba, yung plano, hindi po nila gusto. Madalas ganyan din po sa ating mga karanasan. Pero makita natin dito, si Nehemiah, hindi po siya natinag. Bagkos ang sabi niya, the God of heaven will give us success. Ito po yung mahalaga when you become a visionary. Hindi pa nangyayari dahil nakita mo na at pinakita na sa iyo ng Diyos. Maliwanag sa iyo ang instruction ng Panginoon. You will never doubt the faithfulness of God kahit may kumontra. You will be consistent, you will be persistent because you have seen it. The Lord has shown it to you. The Lord impressed it in your heart. Ipinahayag na ito sa'yo ng Panginoon. Even in chapter 4, verse 1 to 23, medyo mahaba po ito, but allow me to read this to you. When Sambalat heard what, that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He, he ridiculed the Jews. And in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, what are these, those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from the heaps of rubble, bird as they are? Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, what they are building, even a fox climbing up on it, would break down their wall of stones. Grabe po ang pangmamak. Grabe ang panunuya. Pero tingnan niyo po ang response ni Himaya. Hear us our God, we, for we are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in the land of captivity. 
Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people work with all their heart. But when Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the repairs to Jerusalem walls have gone ahead, and that the gaps were being closed, they were very angry. So grabe dito yung tindi ng persecution. But tingnan po natin kung paano nag-response si Nehemiah, napaka-consistent, napaka-persistent niya. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Tapo natin, ano, napaka-consistent siya, napaka-persistent. Laging panalangin ang kanyang tugon sa anumang kinakarap niyang sitwasyon. At eto pa, napaka-strategic niya. They posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, The strength of the laborers is giving out, and there is so much rubble that we, we cannot rebuild the wall. Also, our enemies said, Before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Verse 12, Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, Wherever you turn, they will attack us. Therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest point of the wall, at the exposed places, posting them by families and with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had prostrated it, we all returned to the wall, each to our own work. Verse 16, from that day on, half of men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor, the officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Verse 19, Then I said to the nobles, the officials and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out and we are wisely, widely separated from each other along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. So we continued the work with half the men holding spears from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. At that time, I also said to the people, have every man and his helpers stayed inside Jerusalem at night so they can serve us as guards by night and as workers by day. Neither I, nor my brothers, nor my men, nor the guards with me took off our clothes each had his weapon, even when he went for water. Grabe po, no? ganyan ka-consistent. Ganyan ka-persistent si Nehemiah. Grabe yung opposition na kanilang naranasan. Hindi siya natakot. Hindi siya natinag. Mga kapatid, ako yung naniniwala, ito rin po ang hinahanap ng Lord sa bawat isa sa atin. We must be passionate. We must envision the future. We must, streamline, we must streamline our priorities. We must be strategic. And we must be consistent and persistent. We must lead ourselves to ensure our victory sa anumang hamon ng buhay na atin pong mararanasan. Like Nehemiah, hindi siya natakot. Hindi siya nag-alilangan sa magagawa ng Diyos. Hindi niya kinwestiyon ang paraan ng Panginoon. Bagkos, he became very consistent sa kanyang paninindigan. Kaya naman makita natin, ganun din ka-consistent and persistent ang mga mamamayang hudyo. Lumalaban, or gumagawa, hawak sa isang kamay ang kanilang mga espada. Willing to fight while doing the rebuilding of the wall. Mga minamahal kong kapatid, naniniwala ako, ito rin ang gusto ng Diyos na makita niya at masumpungan sa atin. This 2023, for us to partake in the year of kingdom manifestation, we must learn to lead ourselves 
Tandaan po natin, we are all born to win. But for us to win, we must learn, we must plan to win, we must prepare to win, and we must expect to win. Ito po si Nehemiah. Pinlano niya paano nila magagawa na may katagumpayan ang mandato ng Diyos. Pinaghandaan niya at ng kanyang mga kababayan ang pagbawagi at inasahan na nila ang kanilang tagumpay, anuman ang maranasan nilang pagsubok. Sana po bawat isa sa atin, ganito rin tayo. Sana bawat isa sa atin, we will lead ourselves, we will practice self-leadership, at garantisado, walang bagay na hindi natin magagawa, walang bagay na hindi natin ma-accomplish, na pinagagawa sa atin ng ating Panginoon. Father, we thank you for your wonderful revelation sa amin sa hapong ito. Salamat po na ang buhay ni Nehemiah ay isa na namang buhay na magiging inspirasyon ng bawat isa sa amin. Kami nagagala, kami nagpupulit, nagpapasalamat because we know, Lord, ang aming mga natutunan sa hapong ito na mga kapahayagan mo sa amin. Kung aming pag-iisipang mabuti, unawaing mabuti, o Lord, at aming isasagawa, Hallelujah! ang tagumpay ay sigurado at garantisado ang aming pong mararanasan. Salamat po, pagpalain mong bawat isang kinig Panginoon sa hapong ito. And may we all be able to lead ourselves towards our destiny. Towards our victory, towards our winning. We bless you, we honor you. In Jesus' most powerful name, Amen and Amen. <music>